I haven't got that drag set too loose and look what it's doing. It's going on massive runs. That is a ripper. Fish number two for the day. G'day everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad. Well, winter is here and that chill has certainly settled in. Been getting a heap of questions from people lately, wanting me to run them through some setup, gear selection and technique to catch brim. I'm gonna cover all of that for you in today's video. So stay tuned and let's get started right now. Okay, we've just hit the water, so why don't I take a minute to run you through the setup that I'm running with. Now, when I am broom fishing in estuaries like this, I'll typically take two or three outfits with me. One specifically designed for soft plastics, one specifically designed for hard body lures and cranks, and the other that's probably designed for surface lures. So if I touch on my soft plastics rods to start off, so this is a Daiwa Infeet EX, and I've got that paired with a Daiwa Luvius 2000 reel. Now this is an awesome setup, really good for ultralight fishing. That rod only weighs just over 90 grams and the reel itself only weighs over 150 grams. So that is a super light outfit. It's a lot of fun when you catch big fish on gear that light. Now what I have done is I have spooled this reel with six pound line and I've got one rod length of six pound of fluorocarbon leader and I've tied the braid and the fluorocarbon leader together using an FG knot. And that's because a lot of the new rods in today have really, really small guides, which they call micro guides. And if your knot's a little bit thick, it tends to get caught up in the guides as you're casting. What's unique about a soft plastic rod is that they're a really fast action. And what I mean by that is the rod tip is quite stiff and it's designed for that for two particular reasons. So one is, is when you're doing your lifts, you feel like you're in control of that soft plastic at all time. And when a fish comes along and strikes, it's just so sensitive and you're gonna feel that through all the way in the rod because it's a fast action. The other reason is because you're mainly using soft plastics like this. Today I'm just using a two and a half inch grub in that midnight oil color, but it's got a single hook, okay? And fast action rods are really designed when you're using single hooks. And that means when you feel a fish nibbling and you lift the rod tip to strike, that it's gonna set that hook pretty quickly. And that's very different to a setup of a hard body rod. So if I can run you through my hard body rod now. So this is an Atomic Arrows, which I've paired with a Diversol 2000. Now, if you want a really good ultralight rod for under 150 bucks, recommend that you have a look at these. They're actually really, really good value. So this is a good outfit again, very lightweight, these Atomic rods. So this is the crank version style of these rods and I use this rod a lot when I'm using those shallow diving cranks and hard body lures. It's perfect for that sort of stuff. I've also got this spooled with six pound line, one rod length of fluorocarbon leader, and again, using an FG knot to connect those together. So what's unique about this rod is it has a slow action. And what I mean by that is the rod tip is really whippy. And again, that's designed for two particular reasons. First is you're using bib style lures and those bib style lures generally flutter in the water like that as they're diving down. And because that rod tip's whippy, what will happen is you're feeling it swim all the time. That action that the rod is doing is basically mimicked on the rod tip and it's great. It just feels like you know exactly what's going on. If there's any weed or debris, you're gonna know straight away because that sort of movement of the rod will stop. The other reason is that you have a tendency to pull treble base lures. So with these rods, because they're slow action, it means that there's a lot of give. So if you feel that fish biting, you lift your rod up, what happens is there's heaps of give in that rod tip and you get a lot better hookup rates. So that's a little bit of the difference from a soft plastic rod opposed to a hard body rod. Well, let me run you through some of the tackle that I've got stored in my Hobie hatch. In terms of tackle that I take out with me, I generally take out these two boxes that I basically just put in the hatch of the Hobie. So first of all, I've got a tackle box here and that is just jam packed full with different things. So you've got hard body lures like double clutches. I've got surface lures in there. I definitely like taking a whole heap of crank style lures in there. So these are great in shallow weedy areas. So I've got those in a whole heap of different colors and different sizes. Um, 
shallow diving minnows just like that. Again, that's outstanding in really shallow areas. A few cranky crabs. Okay, so really just mixing up some of the stuff that I am taking out with me. Again, just giving yourself options. Things don't always go to plan. So it's good to have hard body lures that dive to different depths, different size ones, some surface lures. Um, now the other thing that I have, and this will be pretty common for a lot of broom fishermen out there, is just a packet chock full of soft plastic. So a lot of the Z-Man two and a half inch grubs. So you got one color there, you got another color there and white. You got the old midnight oil. Um, and then I've got some paddle tail stuff as well. So I've got your slim swims like that. So they're one of my favorites. I've got the bait junkie variations of those as well. So that's the paddle tail and also the grub in the bait junkie versions. Now I do have a little container here, which is full of jig heads as the airplane comes over. Um, so typically what I am running in with guys when brim fishing is HWS jig heads, okay? So what I mean is jig heads that look like that. So I'm just gonna put my hand there so you can see it. Okay, so that is a 1 16th. I've also got in this container, I've got 1 20th, 1 28th, and even 1 12th if I wanna go a little bit heavier. Now today, this area that I'm fishing is super shallow and it's super weedy. So I'm starting off with 1 20th, and I think I'll probably stick with that for a little bit and mix and match until I see how things go. And when rigged up, it looks exactly like that. So that's a Z-Man two and a half inch slim swim on that Calico candy color. Again, if you're having a quiet day, it's just a really good strategy to mix things up. Go from a soft plastic, try different jig head weights, get a hard body lure out, try different bib diving weights until you find what's working on the day, Zone in on that and do your best to get a few fish. I think it's time that I stop talking and got a few fish myself. Oh my God. All right. Wow, this is a beast. Oh my God. Wow. This is going to be a really good sized fish. I haven't got that drag set too loose and look what it's doing. It's going on massive runs. Okay. Just going to take our time here because the heartbeat has just jumped up a notch. I'm assuming there's probably some weed on this because the weight is off. This is a really good fish. That rod tip is just, my goodness. Wow. Just gotta take our time, yeah? Let's take our time, because, uh, oh, this is gonna be, you can just hear the drag on that Luvius. It's just going. Oh. You can see the leader, so we're going to see this fish in a second. I know the tendency here is to rush it. There's a heap of weed on this fish, but I think this is still going to be. Oh, this is still a brood of a fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, all right, so we're just gonna. <laughs> Look at the magnificent golden color of this fish. You can see it's got the grub there in its mouth, but that is a beautiful big fish. Love the coloration on them. You've got a really nice big healthy brim there, and that's taken on that Infid EX with the Luvius, and uh, that is a Cracking fish. And look at that beautiful gold coloration on it. So that was just taken on that Infid EX outfit with the Luvius combo. And that is a beautiful brim. Um, went on a really, really big run at first. You could see line peeling off the spool. Um, but uh, Collected a lot of weed on the way, so it's hard to tell just how big it was, but that is a beautiful fish. And uh, we're gonna let this absolutely beautiful brim go to fight another day. It is my soft plastic. Okay, let me run you through some of the techniques, right? So what I'm typically doing 
is I'm casting to any structure. Structure is your friend, right? So structure might be the banks, it might be some weed beds, it might be bridge pylons, okay? It could be just about anything. Now, as I said, I've got that rigged with a 120th ounce jig head. So what I'll do is I'll cast, I'll let it sink for a few seconds, and then I'll add a few lifts, wind in a little bit of that slack like that, and I'm gonna let it sink down to the bottom, okay? Now, in really weedy areas, this can be a little bit tricky and troublesome, but we're gonna work it really slowly. You basically wanna keep your soft plastic in that strike zone for as long as possible, okay? You don't wanna just quickly burn it back because, you know, a lot of the fish will like to have a look at it and then, um, you know, that's a really good way to get really good hookup rates. The other thing that you can do, okay? The other thing that you can do in areas like this is you can, again, cast towards the bank, okay? Let it sink for a couple of seconds, okay? And then just do a really slow roll. And by slow roll, what I mean is you're basically just winding in the rod at a nice slow pace. Now this can be a little bit tricky in really weedy areas. Again, that weed is home and structure for fish. So they're often living in there. So it's a bit of a pain having to get weed on your soft plastic, but I can guarantee you that's where a lot of the fish are residing. So, oh, here we go. Got one, got one, look at that. Here we go. Here we go with this, we've got another. Okay. What an absolute beautiful cracking fish. That is a ripper. Fish number two for the day is an absolute ripper. Okay, so there is another beautiful brim there. Very similar size and you can see this one's still got whoop, the soft plastic in his gob. So if we jump, okay, so there's the, there's a soft plastic there and you can see what I've done is I've got that on a HWS jig head. So where we're fishing today is incredibly weedy. So that really does help because it's almost unfishable at the moment. And basically that with a HWS has equaled this beautiful fish. So let's get this fish on his way. So there is the third fish of the day. Again, he's happily taken that two and a half inch motor oil grub, HWS jig head, and uh, he's definitely not big as the last two. Beautiful, healthy fish. And we're gonna get that soft plastic out of his mouth and get him back in the water. Well, that's a wrap everyone, and thanks for watching. In the end, we landed four brim, two of them really nice size fish, and the other two a bit over the legal size limit. The main purpose of today was to really run you through setup and technique using ultralight gear, differences in rods, and it's something we're going to cover in a lot more detail in the coming weeks, so do stay tuned for that. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and until next time, good fishing, everyone.